Welcome to the Kingdom Community. Many in the body of Christ long for authentic community and a spiritual family to belong to. We exist to connect, equip, and send you into the world to fulfill your destiny and advance the Kingdom of God on the earth. To learn more about us, please visit kingdomcommunity.global. We look forward to hearing from you. It's so good to be with you uh, this evening, your time, morning, our time, and just such an awesome thing when we talk about purpose. When we understand the purpose of something, we'll understand how it fits together and how it works properly. If we don't understand for the purpose in which something is made, we will never fully understand how it fits together to fulfill the function or the purpose for which it's called. So let's pray as we trust God this evening for his word. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness, the richness of your word. Lord, I thank you that you add to us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you, Father, for the goodness the fullness of understanding purpose. The Lord, you had an intent, you were intentful, you were purposeful, and we want to understand that this, this evening, Lord, in a deeper way. So Holy Spirit, I ask you and I welcome you to come and to minister to us, to touch our hearts and, and uplift us, Father, by the power of your Spirit, that we would have a deeper understanding and we would have revelation knowledge in our spirit, not head knowledge, Father, not academic knowledge, but spirit knowledge knowledge in our heart of that which you are saying and that which you are speaking to the church. So, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this platform. Thank you for everybody that's tuned in tonight and around the globe. Father, we thank you for it. We bless you, and we honor you now in the mighty, magnificent name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise God. So, as I said, folk, good evening. Welcome. When we talk about the purpose of a thing, then we start to understand why it was made and for what intent it was made. And when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he started by asking them, who do men say that I am in Matthew uh, chapter 16? We know the, the scripture well in, in Matthew 16, 16. He says, who do you say that I am? And they answered what people were saying. Then Jesus turned it to them and said, but who do you say? that I am. And I believe maybe some of the other disciples is not recorded, but some of them might have said something. But Peter comes out with a revelation. He doesn't say, well, you're Jesus and you, you, we're walking with you for so many years. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus immediately reacts to this and says, Bless are thy Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which art in heaven. And upon this rock I will build the ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, I believe that although we know from, from the commentaries of many biblical scholars, they have translated that word in this context as church. And when you look at the definition of church, they talk about the gathering or the collective of the saints. But that's as deep as they go. And I believe tonight, and I want to share with you an emphasis, I want to put a perspective to you that might be slightly different to what you've been used to. Now, we know in the Greek, it means the called out ones. It means those that were separated and called out. But I want to say tonight that it's not just a calling out, but it's a calling into. Jesus said he's called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Now, many Christians get stuck on where they've come out of. They've come out of their past. They've come out of the world. They've come out of a background that's not glorious. And a lot of Christians get stuck in where they've come from rather than where God is taking them to. And I believe, you know, again, if we just talk about leadership, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, but they needed a Joshua to lead them in to the promised land. 
And we can get stuck on those who let us out, or we can focus by the Spirit of God onto that which leads us in. And it's on that premise that I want to talk tonight about the ecclesia, the collective body of Christ. As Glenn said in the introduction tonight, we are not just body parts. We are part of the body. Every joint in Ephesians 4, every joint supplying, every joint knitted together and meshed together in a unity and a harmony. Now, if we leave it there, which I've called, and you'll see in the notes, I've called that the, the book cover. That's the outer shell of where most people get to. That's the shallows. I want us to go deeper tonight. I want us to look at something far deeper in what Jesus, I believe, was intentful and had purpose of when he spoke that you are the ecclesia, and upon this I'm going to build you, the rock. What was he talking about? So we need to look beyond the cover. We need to look deeper than what the commentaries have told us. Now, again, from a world perspective or, or a, a knowledge ahead, knowledge and academic perspective, we've talked about the church in a loose concept. Now, we are the church, the body of Christ, and, and that is true. But we need to start to understand, I believe, as the church in the 21st century becomes real, becomes relevant, and becomes again aligned to the purpose for which God intended, we need to focus back on what was it when Jesus made this statement in Matthew 16, what was in his mind, what was in his heart, and what was he actually wanting to align us to and purpose us for? It wasn't just to be the called out, a gathering of the saints, a cluster of Christians by name. It wasn't, it wasn't the collective noun of Christianity. There was a deeper, more meaningful purpose for which God intended. So as an understanding, we know that Christ commissioned us to make disciples. We see that in Scripture. We see that we are his fragrance in every place, the Bible says. And we must consider then that God did not want to separate us to make us apart from the world. He wanted to bring us out, equip us to put us back into the marketplace, into community, so that we could affect the world with the power of God, the purpose of God, and the gifting of God that is upon each and every one of our lives. The church, unfortunately, we've had a teaching over many years, and it's got various uh, iterations of that, but the church has wanted to be separate. And they've wanted, and that was the same in, 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 in the days of the Israelites, they wanted a separate kingdom. They wanted to be separated because they'd been in exile, they'd been under oppression and suppression for, for generations, and they now wanted to come out and have their own empire. And unfortunately, church, we see the remnant of that today, that people still want their own empire. They don't relate. They don't, they're not in unity with one another. They walk around in, in separatist type of groups. We call it church. There's only one church, one body, one holy nation. I'm, I'm, it's like an army. There's different units in the army. There's different battalions. There's different battle groups. There's different corps. I'm in one of the corps in a battle group stationed in Centurion, South Africa. But I'm part of the army. I'm part of the one kingdom of God globally. I'm not separate into a little huddle somewhere in the corner. And we need to start to understand that the ecclesia is that body that God called together for a purpose. And so I want to understand and unpack tonight that purpose a little deeper and maybe look at it from a perspective that you might not have seen before, or may not have wanted to go before, because we've got, sorry to say, we've defaulted to the common version of what people have been saying. We, we've defaulted to the spiritual or the religious connotation of the church because it just means the collective, the called out ones. And so we, that's been enough for us. But tonight I want us to break open that box and I want us to look a little deeper. Now, 
In the 21st century, we need to understand this passage of Scripture in Matthew 16. We know we said the Ecclesia is the body that called out, and it's mentioned 115 times in Scripture. But what did Jesus mean when he said, you are the Ecclesia, my church? Well, you see, this was not a new word in the time and the context of the Roman Empire. Now, we know from history that this word Ecclesia pre-existed before Jesus. And what it was, when the Romans came and they conquered a, a territory and they took occupation of a territory, they often broke down what was in that territory, the infrastructure, the governmental structure, the institutional structure. They broke it down and they rebuilt it with a Roman bias, with a Roman culture or a Roman emphasis. And the, the centurion or the officer from Rome may not have been part of the, the conquering army that took occupation of that territory, but he would have been an envoy, a senior leader that was sent from Rome or from dispatched from somewhere to go into that territory and be the, the administrator of reestablishing or establishing Roman culture. And so they broke things down and rebuilt it looking like a Roman culture. It was a replica of Rome. And those centurion leaders were known in the early days as the apostles of Rome, the sent ones. And that's where we get the word of, and, and Kevin's going to do a great session, uh, a second session tonight on the apostles and the movement of the apostles. And I really encourage you to stay for that. It's a powerful session and it will really put context even to what I'm sharing in this first session. And so the, the church, the body of Christ, Jesus had in mind, he, he said to them, Ecclesia. He didn't use that word out of context or out of the period in which he was speaking. Jesus never spoke out of context. He was always in context. So what he was saying to the, to the body, I want you to be my Ecclesia. Now, if we go back and we look, as I said, what the Romans did, the Romans had this Ecclesia. In a town or a, 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 an area, let's call it a city, they would break down the old structure and they would establish a new structure. And during that establishment of new structure, they would call out certain leaders that they were recognized and would recognize them as being, let's call them friends of Rome, that would help this, this centurion, this, this leader, this envoy, to govern the territory, to be the council. And so they would send a town crier who would go out and call a meeting, call an assembly. And the assembly would come together and they would discuss the administration of the city with a premise or a bias towards Caesar and the Roman Empire. And these were the called out to be leaders. And Jesus then uses this phrase, I believe, purposely to say to the church, to say to Peter and the disciples, I am going to build a new ecclesia. I'm going to build a new leadership structure that will be in every place, in every city, every town that will replace the worldly government system, the worldly government order with my body, my church, my called out ones. And it was going to be a, a transition from natural earthly Roman rule or empire rule to the kingdom rule that Jesus came to establish. And that is why he used this word purposely, the ecclesia. So we need to understand in, in Acts chapter 19, when we look at the book of Acts, and we, we go specifically to, to Acts 19, they call the meeting, the town clock, as it were, in verse 35, the leader, the centurion, called the meeting, and they assembled in a public place. And that public meeting was to discuss what? Well, we see that the, the authoritative leaders that were elected, and they were, as I say, these friends of Rome, they came together to lead the community. And remember, we see in Scripture, the Bible says, the elders of the church sat in the gates of the city. That is the same ecclesia, the gathering together of leadership in a public place to manage, govern, or administer the affairs of that city. And that was what the, the church 
was originally intended to do, to govern, to manage, to administer the affairs of the city, not from a world point of view, but from a godly kingdom, spiritual emphasis and point of view. Now, they, they, you see, we need to be careful not to just abandon what Jesus was saying out of context of this ecclesia. They lived under Roman rule. They lived under the occupation of Rome. And we know the Jews that wanted their own kingdom. And they looked to the Messiah to establish a Jewish kingdom. And Jesus said, I didn't come to build a natural kingdom. I came to build a supernatural kingdom. The kingdom of God, that's what Jesus said. The kingdom of God is within you. He wasn't trying to build a replacement in the natural for the Roman ecclesia. He was building a spiritual ecclesia that was governed by the spirit of God to rule and reign over the natural kingdoms of this world. And so when we look at what happened in, 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 in Acts 19, it's so important that they had a assembly. They had this, this gathering. Why did they gather? Well, they gathered because the silversmith was complaining that his market share of selling momentum and coins was di diminishing. It was dwindling because why? The Christians and, and what Paul and them were preaching was turning the place upside down that they no longer wanted a, a, a coin with, with Diana on it, they, they wanted Jesus. And so he was replacing their mindset. He was replacing their emphasis from a natural kingdom ruled by Caesar to a supernatural uh, kingdom led by Christ. And that's what this assembly came together, and they were upset. And it shows me that in the book of Acts, that the church, the early church, the first ascension gift apostles and the apostles of the Lamb were doing such a magnificent job of preaching a new kingdom rule, a new kingdom established authority that the church and the people that were now Christian were leaving their dependency on a Roman empire and were, were building a dependency on a spiritual kingdom, not a worldly empire. And that's why the Romans persecuted the, the church in the first century. It wasn't just because they were Christian. It was because they were turning the world the right side up and starting to speak what Jesus had called them to speak. So there was a substitution and a transformation of the old natural assembly that was biased towards Rome and the leaders were friends of Rome, and Jesus wanted to establish an ecclesia, a group of leadership that was called out to be his spokesmen, his ambassadors that would promote the culture of the kingdom, not the culture of Rome. And so today in this current age, the ecclesia is not just the body that was called out to be different, it's not the body that was called out to hide in a building that we've called to the church and run programs just for the church, to run events just for the church in separatism, in isolation. God called us to equip us, to send us back into the structures of the world to bring godly government, godly order and administration over the affairs of our community. Now, when we look and there's teaching, and it's good teaching, on the Christian's influence in the mountains, the spiritual mountains. One of the saddest things for me in that teaching, and one of the things I believe is slightly misaligned, is that they've taken one of the mountains called the religious mountain. And so we've got the, the family mountain, the governmental mountain, the media mountain, the religious mountain, etc. The religious mountain should never be a mountain on its own. The Christianity is the, is the framework that holds up all the other mountains. It's the ecclesia that get involved in the gates of those thematic areas that we bring influence and we bring leadership into those spheres so that we can be God's ambassadors, God's envoys to speak into those situations and into those uh, areas of, of life in community.
So God is wanting to take the church, the body, the collective, not the individual. Although it's made up of individual people, it is the collective, the sum of the whole, working together to bring godly influence. Now, many years ago in one of the cities that I was pastoring, the city gave me the freedom of the town. Now, that's normally given to politicians and statesmen, but I was granted the freedom of the town for the work that God gave me grace to do in that town to bring peace and reconciliation and, and stop the fighting between. We, we had a lot of ethnic violence in our town. We had a lot of ethnic uh, trouble and, 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 and disarray. And, and God, by his grace, allowed me to, to just bring peace and, and minister peace into our town and into our community. And as recognition of that, the town council honored me with a, 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 an accolade called the freedom of the town. Now, in that freedom, in that charter of freedom, it also gives me the right. And even today, some 20 odd years later, I still retain the right to address the city council on any topic at any time of any of their meetings. In other words, I have right of passage into that town council meeting and I can speak because I have freedom, that's what it means to have freedom to speak into the situation. And I believe in the spirit when we walk as the ecclesia, we have the opportunity to speak into circumstances, to speak into situations, and to speak into the authoritative administrative structures of our community, because that is God's ecclesia. It's the changing from a worldly empire perspective and bringing a godly kingdom perspective into the situation. Now, if we understand that as purpose, church, then we'll start to organize ourselves in that collective to function more efficiently and more effectively to do what we should be doing. Now, if I give you an example of the media ministry made up in our city, are many born-again spiritual believers that have knowledge, skill, and understanding of the media industry. It shouldn't be for a local allotment, what many call the local church, for them to spearhead that, that infiltration and that, that administration and godly governance into that sphere. It should be the collective in the city of all those Christians irrespective of where they are embedded, irrespective of where they fellowship, coming together and having a unanimous voice, a unified voice to speak into and influence what is going on in that sector. And that is what God, I believe, was referring to when he said, I will build my ecclesia, my godly government, my godly authority that will rule and reign with me under my authority into the affairs of the community and bring righteous government, righteous judgment, and the love, joy, and peace of the Holy Ghost into the situation where there was once Roman dictatorship or dominance. I want to bring in a godly governance, which is love, joy, peace. And if we start to understand that as the ecclesia, we'll start to understand I'm not just your brother. You're not just my brother or my sister. We are joined together for a specific purpose according to the grace and assignment that is on our lives. And so when we start to walk in that assignment, when we start to walk in that grace, we start to work together in a spirit of unity. And so if we go back now to Ephesians chapter 4, and we see what God said about the, the gifts that he gave, the ministry gifts in, in Ephesians chapter 4, the, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, for the equipping of the saints, so the saints do the work of the ministry, so that we are edified and equipped to do that which God has purposed and called the church, the ecclesia, to do. It wasn't just to be separated. It wasn't to be identified and have membership somewhere. It was to have influence in our community over the affairs, the governmental and administrative affairs of the things pertaining to godliness and life in Christ Jesus. But the church, sadly, hasn't done that. 
to a large extent. We've pulled back, we've lagered into a holy huddle, and we've had this mentality, we'll just wait till Jesus comes and fixes it all and sorts it all out. Jesus is not running for government. He's already governing from heaven at the right hand of the Father. He has given the delegated authority to govern the earth to the church, to his ecclesia, to the body. He's given us the scepter of authority. Jesus said, all power and authority is given to me in heaven and earth. I give it to you. Go and make disciples. Go, raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. He gave us the power. Now, the sad thing, because we've had a, a misunderstanding or a less than complete understanding of the ecclesia, we've kept all of that separate from the community, and we put all of that into a box with four walls and a couple of doors and windows, and we've called it the church. God never intended us to, to hide away. God never intended us to separate. God intended us to infiltrate and to permeate the atmosphere with the Spirit of God, to permeate community with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are, we've got to turn the world the right way up. It's all upside down. It's all cockeyed right now. We've got to learn to, by the power of the Spirit of God, to come and turn it around and make it what God wanted it. And that is the ecclesia. That's not one man. That's not a ministry. It's a no-name brand. It's, it's the body of Christ coming together. Now, if I came to your city tonight, and some of you are from places I'd love to visit, but if I came to your city and I got out of the, the, the airport and I jumped into a taxi or an Uber and I said to the Uber driver, take me to the church. The sad thing is he would look at me and say, which one? And he'd, in his mind, I, as a member of the community, he'd be wanting to take me to a physical building that houses the church. It's not the church. And we as the church, have promulgated our own misalignment by referring to the building as the church. But we are the church. We know that. So practically, we've got to change our vocabulary. We've got to change our mindset so that we start to talk to people. We are the body of Christ. We are the ecclesia in locality. You see, you and I are brothers and sisters all across the world, but I'm in locality here in Centurion, South Africa. My assignment takes me as an apostle. My assignment takes me to different places, different countries, across Africa, whatever. That's my assignment. But when I'm in the city, my influence is into the capacity of the city, into the community. That's what God has called each and every one of us to do. He didn't just call the fivefold ministry into being influencers in our community. He called each one of us to be a leader of government and administration of the kingdom in every place. In your office, you are part of God's ecclesia, the governmental administrative structure in that office or in the school or in the supermarket, wherever we are. God has called us to be governmental because he came to establish his kingdom, see? His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. It's not a separate thing. Many people have had this misunderstanding that we're waiting for a new kingdom to be established. At the end of days, there'll be a new kingdom. No, there's only one kingdom. God gave Christ the kingdom on this earth. He's not replacing it. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing bust in it. Sure, we're not as effective as we should be globally and generally, there's pockets of it, but God's changing that. The power, the move of the Spirit of God right now over our nations across the world, there's a move of the church to understand our position, our role, and our function. So when we go back to what Jesus said in Matthew 16, he's saying, I want to replace worldly leadership and administration with my leadership and my administration that hears the Spirit of God, walks by the anointing and the unction of the Spirit of God, not in carnality, not in flesh. And that was the purpose, that God established the ecclesia, the collective body of Christ to be influential as governmental, righteous governmental administrators of our town. To replace, and we saw that in, in Acts 19, where, where, where the, the apostles 
preached an effective gospel that stopped people wanting to have a dependency on the Roman Empire and the Roman culture. Today, most of the church has got a dependency on the natural culture of their city or their, or their community or their ethnicity. Their, their, their reliance is still on their ethnic culture instead of having a culture that's reliant on Christ. Because we haven't done what God's called us to do properly yet, but that's changing and that's happening. We're getting to that place where God has for us that authority. Now, we need to change our mindset. Church, tonight, if anything you take away from this lesson, it's to change our mindset. We are not the church hidden in a building. The Bible says we are the light of the world to be put on a hill, to shine brightly, and to be the light and the salt, to be his ambassadors, to be his spokesman, to be the trumpet, the herald of God by the Spirit of God in every situation, every circumstance, and every aspect of community. We need to take away the Roman, in those times, the Roman ethnic grouping that controlled manipulated and suppressed the people and replace it with a godly governmental structure and administration that brings freedom and brings liberty. That's the purpose of the ecclesia. It wasn't to call us out, to hide us in a huddle and just wait for Jesus. That's not scriptural. The purpose was to bring us to that place where we would be effective in administration and leadership in our community. We should be everywhere where there's things of unrighteousness wanting to happen. What was Jesus? In a nutshell, the purpose of Jesus for this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he would destroy the works of the evil one. And when we walk in that spirit, the same spirit, that rose Jesus from the dead dwelleth in us. When we walk in that very same spirit and we go into all these areas of influence in our city, in our community, and we speak the love of God, we speak the righteousness of God, we will change the atmosphere. We will be atmosphere changers for the kingdom of God. We will establish a new order, the order of righteousness, peace, and joy. We'll establish a new level of accountability when we just act as the ecclesia, not as the secret service. The church is not the secret service. There's no 007s tonight. We are there to stand, put on our armor, and stand for Christ. And having done all to stand, stand. So we, he wants to build the ecclesia, the governmental authority, and not a natural kingdom. See, that's where the Jews, as we draw to a close, that's where the Jews missed it. The Jews were looking for a natural kingdom. They wanted Jesus to hang around, stick around, and be the king on the earth to replace Caesar as a natural king. But Jesus understood he wasn't going to replace uh, uh, Caesar for a season as a natural king. He was replacing the worldly order and demonic order with spiritual order that would last eternity because he was fulfilling what the prophet said in the Old Testament. And upon his shoulders shall be his government and it shall have no end. Church, are we governing tonight in our spheres of influence as the ecclesia? Are we ruling and reigning and governing with him tonight as he purposed for us to do? when he said the gates of hell will not prevail against us? Or are we isolating ourselves and separating ourselves, waiting for, for an escape pod to take us to heaven? Or are we being effective as the body, the unified body of Christ to affect our nation, to affect our community with the power of God and bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven? Bless you. I trust that has blessed you. I trust that it's, it's provoked you tonight to new thinking. I trust that it's provoked you to say, I can't do church anymore because God never called us to do church.
He called us to lead as the ecclesia, the governmental administration over cities and towns and nations by the power and the grace of God. Thanks for joining us today at The Kingdom Community. We trust that you are encouraged as a result of spending time with us. We exist to connect, equip, and send you out into the world to fulfill your destiny and advance the kingdom of God. To learn more about the Kingdom Community, please visit our website, kingdomcommunity.global. Again, our website is kingdomcommunity.global. Together, we are better.